This is part two of vegetation indices using GRASS 7 tools in QGIS. If you haven't watched part one, you should go back and go through the first steps to using i.vi to calculate some different vegetation indices from Sentinel-2 data. This tutorial will go through some different ways to show uh, where there is dense vegetation in the Lake Victoria region. A lot of these are based on the absorption of red wavelengths uh, and the reflectance of near infrared. And the one we calculated in part one is NDVI, which you can see here. It's one of the most widely used and probably one of the most robust indices, but we'll go through the calculation of some others too. So for the Calculation of other indices, we're going to use i.vi again. So open up your tool. And after we calculate some of these, we'll go through what they are and what they mean and how to display them. We're going to run these as a batch process. So that's going to allow us to run more than one uh, type of vegetation at a time. We'll fill in the inputs once and then change the type of vegetation index here in the drop downs and then when we click run it'll go through them all and spit them all out at the end and then we'll be able to work with them. So the input red channel, click on the ellipsis and then go to select from open layers and find your red channel. It's band 4 and then click OK. We're going to run six different indices, so add three more rows by clicking the plus column in the upper left. Select your the title of the red band, right click, go to copy, and then paste it into each of the, the next rows. Types of vegetation indices that we're going to do are ARVI, which is the Atmospherically Resistant Vegetation Index, and the second row, make that DVI, which is the Difference Vegetation Index. The third one is SR, or Simple Ratio, The fourth one will be EVI2, that's Enhanced Vegetation Index. Then GARI, or Green Atmospherically Resistance Vegetation Index. And the last one is IPVI, or Infrared Percentage Vegetation Index. And then we'll input the rest of our channels. So the near infrared channel, click on the ellipsis, select from open layers, select your near infrared channel, it's band eight, click OK. And then again, copy it down into each of the rows. Your green channel is next, and we'll just follow the same steps for each one of these inputs. Green channel is band 3. Next is the blue channel, which is band 2. Copy. And the fifth channel, which is the first vegetation red edge layer. seventh channel 
which is another vegetation red edge layer. Uh, we are not going to do this MSAVI2, so we don't have the slope of the soil line, so we'll just leave those blank. Leave the maximum bits the same. Leave grass 7 region extent the way it is. Uh, we have to manually enter 0 for the grass 7 region cell size, so do that for each row. And then under vegetation index, that's where you'll tell it where to save your file. So if you click on the ellipsis and then just type something generic in here, I, I'm going to type veg and an underscore and then click save. This window will pop up and you can autofill the index that you're calculating as the name of the file. So it, you don't have to fill all these in manually. So go to the drop down that says do not autofill right now. Go to fill with parameter values. And then choose the parameter to use, which will be type of vegetation index. And then click OK. And there's all your file names with the vegetation index. And you can let them load in QGIS or not. We're going to have to load in the ones that are saved as files anyway. And then click Run. This process is going to take a, a pretty long time, a few minutes for sure. So I'm going to pause the video and come back when it's finished. While this is running, you can see the number of the algorithm that it's processing. So it's three out of six. It won't actually show anything in this bar, but it is running and you'll see the log changing as it's working. Okay, so the batch processing is complete. Click OK, and then you can close all of these windows. And the temporary files will be over here uh, in the table of contents and we can just remove those. So you can click on the top one and hit shift and then click the bottom one and it'll select all of them. Right click and remove them. And then we'll add them back in from our files that we saved. So it's the easiest way for me to do this is in my browser panel. Go to the folder where I saved them and there they are, veg. ARVI, DVI, EVI2, GARI, <laughs> IPVI, and SR. So select them all and then just drag them down into your pane and they'll all show up. We'll run through these and we can talk a little bit about what each one is showing. Um, so I'm going to turn the off all of the layers for now except for VEG ARVI. So ARVI stands for Atmospherically Resistant Vegetation Index, uh, and it's correcting for the effects of the atmosphere uh, in the imagery by combining the red and the blue bands. So if we right click, go to Properties, and we'll just display this a little bit differently. We'll make it similar to what we did to NDVI so we can compare them. So you click on render type, make it single band pseudo color. Uh, the color will be red, yellow, green. Under mode, go to equal interval. And we can bump that up to 10 classes. And then click apply. And click OK. This index is less sensitive to the atmospheric effects. Uh, and it uses the red and blue bands to do correct for those. The Sentinel-2 data doesn't have a lot of atmospheric effects. You can see a lot of the yellow because it corrected for some of the red and the blue. And if you compare that to the NDVI, 
you can see that the uh, ARVI is, is much more yellow. Uh, so it's showing more sort of in the mid range. We'll turn that one off and now we'll turn on the DVI. So DVI is the Difference Vegetation Index. It's really simple. It's just the near infrared minus the red band. Uh, and it shows the amount of vegetation, but it doesn't deal with any atmospheric effects at all. And it's not normalized like the NDVI is. So right click, go to Properties, and we'll make it look similar to the NDVI. So render type is single band pseudo color, red, yellow, green. Mode is equal interval. We'll do 10 classes. Click apply and click OK. So these actually, the this is the DVI and here's the NDVI. And they look fairly similar, but the DVI has quite a bit more in the middle range uh, in the yellow. And that is a result of it not being normalized. There's NDVI and DVI. We'll turn that off and turn on the EVI2. So that's the Enhanced Vegetation Index. Um, and it's good, especially in high biomass regions, uh, when atmospheric effects are insignificant. So we'll compare that to NDVI as well in the same way. Go to Properties, Single Band Pseudocolor, Red, Yellow, Green, Equal Interval, 10 Classes, click Apply, and click OK. Uh, so this is pretty dense vegetation up here, and then uh, kind of less dense down here. And you can see it looks pretty similar to the NDVI. The GARI index is the Green Atmospherically Resistant Vegetation Index. So we'll turn that one on. It uses a green band instead of the near-infrared band. So it can be used to measure chlorophyll concentrations. It's a slightly different measure than the other ones that are based on red and near-infrared. So we'll visualize that one too. Go to Properties. Single band pseudo color, equal interval, 10 classes, click apply, click OK. So using the green, uh, you can see that there's, there's a lot of pretty dense vegetation here, which we also saw um, on the EVI2, which we can turn back on. And it's showing pretty dark green up there, which probably means that there's quite a bit of chlorophyll there. Now we'll turn on the IPVI, which is the Infrared Percentage Vegetation Index. And it's essentially the same as NDVI, but the math is slightly different so that the range goes from 0 to 1 instead of negative 1 to positive 1. So no negatives makes it a little bit easier to do some calculations with it later on. So right click it, we'll look at it compared to NDVI. So there's IPVI, and then if we turn it off, NGVI, and it looks exactly the same as it should. And then the last one that we calculated is the simple ratio. And that is what it sounds like. It's the near infrared divided by the red band. So that reduces the atmosphere and topography effects. Uh, but it's, again, not normalized like NDVI. So we'll visualize that one and compare with NDVI. And there's quite a bit more 
yellow and red uh, because it's not divided by the near infrared plus the red. Uh, it's just infrared divided by red. So those are some of the other vegetation indices that you can calculate with i.vi and Sentinel-2 data.